Hello and welcome to another Sugar Effects tutorial. In this video, I want to show you how to use Adobe Premiere Pro markers as a main tool to create the subtitles when using Subtitles 4.0. As you can see, I am here in Adobe Premiere and I already have my finalized movie in this timeline. You will also notice that there are some timeline markers already created along the entire production. In the first part of this video, I want to show you how to export all of these markers that have been already created and then import them back into the application using Subtitles 4. In order for me to make sure that the markers have been created correctly, I'm going to go into the left side down here and look for the markers window. If I click in the timeline, I can see that all of the markers are already in here, every single one of them with the corresponding text. Now we go to the file menu and then we go to the export sub menu and select markers. When you select markers, you will have three different options for file type. The first one is the comma separated value. The second one is the text file, which actually doesn't work. And the third one is the web page. So of course, the web page is going to be for internet alone. So the only option that we have to export our markers is using the comma separated value. This comma separated value export will take a look at the text inside the marker. And if the text contains any commas whatsoever, then it will try to export that particular segment as a marker. So we are going to have to learn in the second part of this video how to create our text so it doesn't go into the problem of exporting every single comma as a new marker. So in this case, we're going to select the comma separated value and then we choose the output destination a place in our hard drive i already did that in here so the only last thing that i need to do is put in here the title for my file name and then press ok when i'm done and when i do that there is another dialog box that says that my markers have been exported successfully so i'm going to say ok now I have done already the export of the entire number of markers that have been positioned on the timeline in this production. So in order for me to bring that data back into the application as subtitles, I'm going to have to use Subtitles 4.0. Subtitles 4.0 requires that the element in your timeline should be a continuous time code from beginning to end, so there is no synchronization problems. As you can see here in my timeline, I have all the clips one after the other and every single clip basically has a different time code from one to the next. This is a typical scenario for any edit when using Adobe Premiere or any other editing application. Our recommendation at this point is to do one of three options. The first one is to render the final movie and then create a brand new timeline with the final render movie. The second option is to create a nested sequence. The nested sequence will act as if it is a complete one asset from beginning to end. And the last option, the one that I want to show you here today, is by creating a transparent video that we're going to place on the top track of this particular edit to be used with subtitles. To do that, we're going to go back to our project window, and down here we can click on the new item. In the new item, we're going to select transparent video. The transparent video will give you a dialog box and you should select the right size according to the final movie that you're creating. In this case, the formatting here is correct, so I'm going to say OK. Now I will take that transparent video and I will put it on the top track of my edit. And of course, I will make sure that the entire length is covered by this transparent video. The transparent video is an asset that contains and reads the timecode from beginning to the end of the asset. In other words, it ignores the timecode of the clips underneath. Some people want to use the adjustment layer, but the adjustment layer actually looks at the timecode of every single clip underneath. So the adjustment layer will not be useful for this purpose. In this case, the transparent video is the optimal asset that we're going to be using. Now we go to the effects browser. We go into the video effects category. We scroll down to the sugar effects subtitles, which is down here, and then select subtitles for, and we drag it on top of the transparent video. So this is an effect that is now being applied to the entire asset on the top track. 
we now can go to the effect controls. If we scroll down a little bit, we can go into the parameters and then select the input format that we want to input to be used right now. So the exported file that we just did is actually the Premiere Marker CSV. So we're going to select that. Also in the text input parameter, we're going to click on the button to import the text file. And then we're going to go into our hard drive location and we should have the CSV file that we just exported and we're going to say import. As you can see here in our canvas window, now we have some data related to the file that we just imported. Let me turn off the visibility of my video for the moment so we can focus and explain to you what's going on in here. On the left side, we can see the RTC or running time code, and this time code should match the time code in your timeline as shown in here. In this particular case, this is not matching, so you have to go into the left side over here into the parameters and make sure that you are not selecting the drop frame. So I turn off the drop frame and then I come back and I can see that the time code now is matching perfectly. Also, in parentheses, I have 143 subtitles. On the right side, the input format, which is Premiere Marker CSV, and the version 4.0 of the plugin. If I move my playhead to a place where I can see a subtitle, in the center, we have the current subtitle. In here, the in point and the out point in timecode format. Also, we can see the text for that subtitle, and down here, the actual subtitle. On the top area, in teal color, the previews and the next subtitle. So we know ahead of time that we have other subtitles either before or after the current subtitle. If you have selected the name of the plugin in the effect controls, then you should be able to see this little blue gadget. That little gadget allows you to move the position of your subtitle anywhere on the screen. The position parameter can be found also in the parameters over here on the left. That is going to be under the main setup. You can type in perfectly the number of pixels where you want to position your subtitle. If you take a look at your parameters in the plugin, you're going to see that they are related mostly to the appearance of the subtitle. The first text settings over here will allow you to change the font and the text color and size and other parameters. So most of these are going to help you make your subtitle look as good as possible. Down below here where it says text box, that text box refers to the actual color underneath the subtitle. So if you want to change that color and the size of it, you simply go ahead and select something maybe a little more colorful and you can change the size on the sides or in the offset vertical as well. So you can create the box that you want. The time offset, you can move uh, X number of frames only if the synchronization is not correct to the positive side. And in your canvas, you will see the number of frames that have been moved to make sure that your subtitles are synchronized properly with the actual dialogue in your video. Also, whenever you create a negative number, it will tell you that your offset is now into the negative number of frames, meaning that every single subtitle title in the entire movie has been moved so many frames. Of course, in this particular case, we don't need to do any offset, so I'm going to type in zero again. Now let's get closer to one of these subtitles. This subtitle contains two lines of text and there is a marker that corresponds to that subtitle. So let's double click on that marker. The data in here contains these characters. These three characters is what is called a tag and this tag corresponds to the comma. As I mentioned earlier, because we are exporting the markers as a comma separated value, we have to make sure that the exporter inside Adobe Premiere doesn't look at this comma as a separate marker. In order to avoid that problem, we had to create this tag. And this tag happens to be here after the word wait. And also we can find it here and here. In this marker, there is also another tag. And this tag is over here with a capital R. This tag corresponds to the second line. Every single marker that is going to be decoded by the subtitles plugin cannot have two lines unless you put a tag to make sure that the subtitles decodes the text as a two-line text. And this tag will help subtitles understand that this marker actually has two lines.
So I'm gonna move the playhead to a position where I can see the text, the actual commas, also the second line have been decoded properly. So in the second part of this video, I wanna show you how to create all of these markers and make sure that every single comma and return is going to be correctly formatted in order for the process to work flawlessly. At this moment, you can select to view your video clip and make sure that every single subtitle is actually synchronized perfectly with your video and once you make sure that everything is correct, you can go into the parameters and turn off the info button so all of the data that was in the canvas disappears. So now that you have your subtitles done and everything is synchronized, you have two different options. One option is to render this video with the burn-in subtitles, just like you see it here. The other option is to export the data. And if you want to export the data, you have to go into the parameters of the SugarFX plugin and select a second function, which is the export data exchange. If I enable the info box again, you will see that now you have a label in here telling you that you're going to export this to a specific place in the hard drive and the file name. So right now we haven't selected any of that, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. In the parameters, you already have the input format, which is the Premiere Marker CSV that we just imported that we are using right now. So we don't need to change this. If you were gonna use another type of data and only do the translation or the data exchange, then you would click on the import text file. But for this particular example, we don't need to do that. The export process will take you in a couple of steps. The first step is to choose a folder. So I'm going to select the folder in my hard drive that I want to save that file. So I'm going to open that folder and that data goes into the choose folder data in here. So right now I haven't saved anything. The only thing I just did was to choose the folder where I want to save the file. Next, I'm going to click on file name in here. So I will type the name that I want and I'm going to say OK. Now that I type that data in here, notice that in my canvas, now I have the export to and it tells me where in my hard drive the file is going to be saved. The file name is called exported subs SRT export. So of course we haven't selected the format that we want to export to. In here on step two, we have the export file format and we can select from all of these formats. If you want to exchange this data with some people using Final Cut Pro X, you can select this option, or you can select the standard format that everybody uses, which is SRT, or you can send out this data as a user TC, which is a format only used by SugarFX subtitles. So I'm going to go ahead and select the SRT format, and the next thing that I need to do is click down here on this little button where it says click to export file. So when I do that, now the file has been exported. At this moment, that file should be in my hard drive and I can even use it within the same plugin in here. So if you want to bring that data instead of the comma separated values, now we go into the different function, which is the subtitles import create. So the input format, now we're going to bring that SRT that we just exported. I'm going to click on the import text file and I'm going to select the exported SRT file and I'm going to say import. Again, it's telling me that I have 143 subtitles. The format now that I selected is the subrip SRT and everything should be exactly the same. Of course, you're gonna see that if I click on the edit of this file, the format is indeed SRT format and there is no tags in there because the SRT doesn't use those tags. So now this data can be sent out to any outlet like Vimeo or YouTube or any other projection venue that requires SRT format. If you want to see more of these videos, please visit our YouTube channel at SugarFX TV and let us know if you have any comments or questions about certain techniques or specific workflows that you would like to use. So until next time, thanks for watching.